All right, if you're here to learn how to build Rally apps and extend our platform with JavaScript, you are in the right spot. In this video, I'm going to give you a quick tour and walk through the API and the SDK. Basically, resources that you'll use every single day when you're writing apps. So my name is David Thomas. I'm a systems engineer on the sales team here at Rally Software. It's a great, beautiful day out in Santa Cruz. I need to walk over to the beach here in a little bit, but I want to get this video taken care of first, get my chores done. So uh, just to remind ourselves, the purpose of why you're watching this video is that as a Rally customer, you want to be comfortable extending the Rally platform um, to provide your business with unique insights into your own data. And the acceptance criteria that I've put together um, to, to make sure I'm doing the right thing, uh, capturing the right, the essence of these videos is I want to make sure you know where to, to find existing apps uh, on GitHub, know where to find help and resources, which is the, the content of this video. The next video will actually start coding, uh, and we want to uh, we want to be able to fire up and start coding a brand new app in less than three minutes. We also want to be comfortable with JavaScript and the SDKs and the APIs, being able to try, fail, debug why it's failing, um, and learn along the way, and and have fun with that. And then uh, I also want you to be uh, not not overwhelmed with stress, but rather overwhelmed with the possibilities of what the, uh, the Rally SDK can can offer. So. That's why, hopefully, why you're watching these videos, and hopefully, how I can help with the videos. So, for today, I want to cover the um, basically three things. So I'm going to cover first the Web Service API. That's the um, that's uh, Rally's way of of letting you have programmatic access to the data in your subscription. The second thing I want to cover is the App SDK, and that's the the, the software development kit that gives you all the great um, visualization um, components like the drop downs and the charts and the buttons and all that good stuff. And then also want to cover uh, the Sencha XJS uh, documentation just briefly because there's a lot of good uh, training material in there. So with that, uh, as I've said before, the number one place you want to memorize is go to the, is the uh, and we're going to go to the developer uh, portal for Rally, and it's developer.rallydev.com, and I'm going to walk you through the uh, the following three: the SDK, Web Service API, and Sentry Docs. So let's actually um, let's go there, developer.rallydev.com. The first thing I want to cover, if we scroll down here, this is usually how I get to it. There's a number of different ways you can get to it, especially if you're in your Rally subscription, you can get to this from the help. But but if you go down here, there's a link to the uh, Rally, the uh, 2.0 Release Candidate One. It's the uh, the actual SDK. Now, I'm going to do a little bit of a little bit of a um, slight um, what do you call it? Move of hands or whatever. And I'm going to actually change the URL to RC2 that just came out a few days ago. And I'll make sure we're on the latest. So this this link that from the developer portal will change in the next week. Um, but uh, but for now, I want to get to the the latest that we have. In any case, so here we are at the SDK. And again, this is the this is what we're going to be using to actually build the apps that we want to paste into Rally. So along the top, and what's cool too is that this this uses this, the same documentation framework called JS Duck. You can see the name of it down there, whatever. Um, but this uses this, the same layout uh, is used by the Sencha docs that we'll we'll come up to in just a second. So at the home, we're sitting at the home, uh, and at the home here, there's a number of things that are, that are going to be really useful. One is uh, uh, some quick links to the, to the docs and the guides. That those just there's the tabs across the top as well, the examples, and also we give outbound links to the web service API, which we'll be going to next. Um, and also you have the uh, Stack Overflow link for where to go get help. So if we come up along the top, just left to right, uh, we have the actual the, in the gear icon. We actually have the documentation, all of the classes uh, that represent all the components that we have available, like. The boards, or the grids, charts, dialog boxes, pickers, components like buttons or the add new button, sliders, check boxes, etc. We'll dig into that in a little bit. We also have some guides. Strongly recommend you take some time and go through some of these guides. There's things on getting started, um, the Rally App Builder tool, which we'll use in the next video, building your first app. So if you go into these guides, our engineers have taken a lot of time, uh, and they spent a lot of time, and taken a lot of time to uh, put together so just a, a great step-by-step -step, um, tutorials on getting started with things. Okay, Highly recommend those guides. And then the last one, the little light bulb here, here are some examples. So example code. So um, the one I like to start with, for example, is the grid. I'm actually going to probably build a grid on our next video and walk through, the, walk through that. And of course, it doesn't work in the new RC2, so I'll have to let them know. And here we go. Okay, so here's an example of grid. 
that's actually running. And you can view the source and see the actual source code for the examples, which is pretty darn nice. Okay, so that is the app SDK. Um, now, one thing I want to point out when you actually go in, when you're using these docs, let's go, um, let's take a look at the button, the rally.ui button. Now, let's ignore the actual coding aspects here, but I want to give you some, uh, uh, some help in navigating the documentation. That's really important. So here's an example of a button. This is the full name of the button, rally.ui.button. There's also an alias name called xType, a uh, little shorthand notation. You'll see that a lot. So right across the top, you see that information. You'll see right below that some other navigation, some configs. So as you're creating a button, all the little things you can do to, to change how it behaves um, when, you, when you actually instantiate it for the first time. Uh, properties of that button once it's created, the properties that are available, the methods you can call on it. Actually, look, at there's 133 methods on a button. <laughs> uh, I'll explain why there are so many in just a second. And then another important one are the events, right? So when, when you want to capture what the user is doing to that button and take action. So you can see, for example, there's an event called, you know, click. So, you know, what to do, what, what JavaScript to call when the user clicks that button. You also see on the right, there's the hierarchy. As I said before, XGS is a very object-oriented type um, model around JavaScript, which makes it really fun um, well for me because I have a, a strong OO background. But here you can see the hierarchy, and it's, it's kind of, what's interesting is you can see right now we're at the, the, at the end of it here on the leaf. Uh, we're at the rally UI button, which uh, extends the XJS button. Uh, so the rally engineers have extended it and put our own, our own uh, flavor on it. Uh, you can also see that it's the, the X button is based on X component, which is based on X abstract component, which is based on X base. Now, as you can imagine, in OO land, all of those classes have the, come along with their own configs and properties and methods and events. And that's why you see things like the fact that there are 133 methods on button. Not all of them are on just the rally version of the button. So if you want to minimize that, you can come up to show. This is something I wish someone told me early on. And you can turn off inherited. And that's uh, what that will do is that will make the things like the configs and the, and the methods and the events only pertinent to the particular class that you're on. So in this case, we're at the rally UI button. Now maybe you now I notice that there's no events on my button. That just means the rally engineers didn't find any new events. But if I go to the, the X button, which is where the, the guts of most of the button-esque stuff is, you can see now there are only eight um, only eight events that are button related, like click, menu runs, mouse out, etc mouse over, okay? And those make sense, those are button related. Now if I come back and turn on inherited again, I'm gonna get events, I have 34. And a lot of these events are part of that life cycle that X has provided. I mentioned the life cycle stuff that just you get for free. Um, so things like, you know, after rendered uh, or before activated. Now I don't, I'd have to look again in the life cycle to know where those particular events are handling, but in all likelihood, as an app developer, you, you won't care. So um, sometimes turning off inherited makes this less busy and focuses on just the, uh, the components that you're interested in. Um, usually I, you don't have to mess with protected or private for the most part. So the, the inherited one is the one that I like, to, I like to toggle off if I'm really trying to hone in. And then uh, if you go back to the home, uh, actually no, back to the gear, you'll see this is the list of all of the uh, components that Rally is providing on top of the Xed ones, okay? And you'll get all the rich, um, uh, you get all of the rich uh, theming that, that uh, Rally's putting together. Uh, and I wonder if I go to like the multi-object picker, take a look at this one here. Uh, one thing you'll notice is that there's uh, one part of the documentation that's real nice is you see a code editor, so you can actually come in and type in here. And there's also a live preview. And these live preview docs will show an actual live preview. And I'm wondering if, because I'm in the new RC docs, let's go to RC1, take a quick look here. Back to live preview. Yeah, OK. It's so maybe something just didn't get wired up as part of the, um, uh, the new docs, I guess. I guess my network, is, yeah, my network's a little pokey. OK, so here you can see this live preview. I can actually have a, a, a multi-object picker. And I can go to the code editor and actually change. I could tweak this if I wanted to and uh, add some configurations. And the configurations would be these things here, of which I could come in and, and into the code editor and put them in and actually get a live example and kind of tweak it. So it's kind of nice way to kind of get in and just kind of practice a little bit um, and see what, what configurations you want to do uh, for this particular object. I'm going to leave it at that for the Rally SDK docs. As we start to code, you, when we come in and we'll start looking at the actual components we want to drop in, then we'll, we'll dig a little deeper. 
Now, this the other thing I wanted. To, the second thing I wanted to cover is the actual web service API doc. So back to the home. Uh, I like to come to it from here, just convenient. So down here you see web service API. And as I mentioned, this is the portal for um, uh, the vehicle, the conduit, whatever you want to call it, for getting uh, data uh, in and out of your Rally subscription. Okay, this is the this is the front door for programmatic access. Um, so you can see here under uh, SLM doc, uh, Slim doc web service. All right. So again, this is a REST API, and it uses the JSON JavaScript object notation format for data exchange. So there's a lot in here. Like you can go to the introduction, which is where we're at, and you can you know read through it all like a jazz. But you, at the end of the day, I'm going to come down to the model, the object model, and you can see here when I click an object model, we get a picture. This is the domain model of the uh, objects and the inheritance of the. Um, um, relationships of those of those uh, objects that, that's in Rally. And you, if you look closely, you'll see things like defect and task and test case, and those are all children of something called an artifact. Artifacts a child is something called a workspace domain object. And as, as you walk the tree, each of those has their you know they'll sprinkle on their own properties and stuff. But ultimately, um, what I come down is uh, on the left here. As I scroll down, you can see a list of all the objects. So if I look at one, say defect, this is going to show me at the, the at the lowest level of detail, what fields are available on a defect? Okay, notice that it's parent as an artifact. So there may be some fields that are generic ones that are uh, on the artifact objects. I may have to go up there um, if I'm looking for them. But at the defect level, these are the the, the fields that are available. So accepted date, uh, whether it's blocked. Um, you can see th for each field whether it's required on the object uh, when you create it. It's notes with you know boolean versus string. Um, whether it's sortable, how you can query it. Here another another example. Let's go to find something more interesting. It has, also has all the custom fields, which is dynamic, which is awesome in these docs. I go down. Da, 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 da. So here's one like uh, open date, right? You can actually do a, a number of different queries on open date, greater than equal, etc. So this is the definitive guide for where you can find find. Uh, the, what attributes are available on an object. Now there's one outlier <laughs> that gets everybody every time. Um, if you looked up at the object model, you did not see something called a user story. Oh, did I have to go to the top? No, that's kind of weird. Oh, there we go. Okay, it just took a little time to load. Okay, um, on this picture, there's nothing called a user story. That's because it's called a hierarchical requirement on the very bottom here. That is what a user story is. Just memorize it, don't ask questions, <laughs> just do as I say. Um, so on the left, if I go to hierarchical requirement, you can see all the fields that are part of a story. So block, block reason, etc. Okay, now one thing that's interesting from here is you can actually query your rally data from here to kind of do some test queries. So one thing I might look for is name equal or name contains. And actually, how do I know how do I know that? Um, if I go down to name, scroll down real quick, I'll just show you so it's not magic. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, you know what? So I don't see name in here. It's alphabetical, which means name is actually probably part of the requirements. Let me go up up a level. Let's see if name is there. No, it's not there. So let's go up to artifact. And artifact has up oh, there name. Okay, so name uh, is a string, and it has these query op uh, operators. I can do say well, where a name equals something specific, or name contains or does not contain, etc. So let's go back to let's go back to hierarchical requirement. I'll say name contains um, getting started video. There's a little syntax for this, little parentheses syntax, but you can kind of get the gist here. And I'll run a query. And this will go and fetch the actual data uh, matching results. Look at the metadata along the top. It says total result, result count is eight. There are eight stories. Now, I actually know I don't have that many, so I think I, I got more stories than I wanted, but if you just look, here's you know getting started videos and then the name, and that's how it matched. But what I want to do is I want to actually have a compound statement, so I'm going to add another one here and do owner equals dthomas at rallydev.com. I think that's the right syntax with the login name. It might be dthomas, and I'll just try it. So that'll come back, and now I can see total results is three, and that's exactly what I expected, so I just had to uh, filter down by name. And if I look at the results, uh, let's see if I collapse them here. Now remember, tip number one in the last video, JavaScript objects. 
name value pairs, right? Name colon value everywhere. So you're looking at a sea of all this results. You're like, what am I looking at, right? It even gets worse uh, if you go full, fetch full objects. I'll rerun that again. And you'll see that there are three results, okay? Uh, if I open up one of the results, now look how nested this gets. There's a lot of stuff in here, but again, just step back, name, colon, value. So here I can see name, owner, colon, value is an object. And in there I've got things like um, a reference to the owner, Dave T's the name, etc. Here's another one, project, colon, value. All right, project is called demos, okay. And uh, so that's how you kind of step back and take and get some get some sanity here of what you're looking at. But at the end of the day, I can see here that uh, let's go down. There's a lot of stuff. Name. The name of this is getting started video number three. All right, I just pulled data out of Rally. Got a bunch of stuff. That was awesome. So this the Web Service API gives you a nice place to do that um, and test out those queries. And you'll use these queries, the syntax in your app. Um, so this is a nice place to play with it and get the syntax right. I'm going to leave the Web Service API docs at that. Um, I do want to mention, let me go back to the Sencha docs now, docs.sencha.com. This is more of a tip. I'm not going to go through any of these, um, but because we build off the Sencha framework, let's just go to XJS, which is the latest one's fine. I think we're like 4.2, 4 so we're not too far behind here. Um, same look and feel as the Rally ones, uh, but if you go into the, like, the gear, you'll see all the components. Right? There's a whole bunch of them in there, um, but what I want to focus on are things like the guides, the Sencha guides, so you can see things... Like if you're interested in the class system, MVC architecture, layouts and containers, components, etc. There are a lot of great um, docs, docs in here, and as well as rich videos, like 45-minute long videos on the details. Actually, if I go to videos, here's another one. So there's a lot of videos on like the architecture of XJS, the layout system, an introduction to it if you have never seen it before. Um, another great place, and then uh, under examples, I like to come in, for example, to this one called Kitchen Sink example of uh, a lot of the things that are available in X. So I just kind of come in, multi-sort grid, um, I don't know, uh, grouped grids. So you know how you get grids that have expanding data, uh, trees, you know, collapsible trees. So you get a sense of all the things that are available, basic buttons, large buttons, menu buttons that have expanders. So this is a, if you want to see what's available in X, go to the kitchen sink. Okay, but wait, there's more. You may hear, I'm just going to mention this, but you may also hear something called the Analytics Lookback API. And this is a, in, um, uh, an offering that Rally has. It's part of our analytics, our new analytics engine. And the Lookback API is an API that, that lets you query uh, the uh, temporal information about, about uh, what's changed for artifacts. So anytime you go into RAL and you change a, a single value on a single field, we record that. So you can use the look back API to look back and say, well, as of Friday at 4.55 p.m., what was the state of you know, all of our stories in, in this iteration? And, and then how did that change at 5.01 p.m.? Very, very rich uh, collection of data that you can query. And so all those changes that happen in Rally are sent to this database. The data is usually 15 to 60 seconds behind Rally. Uh, you can get there if you go to the developer.rallydev.com. Oh, it's really slow. Let's just go to the home here. It's actually, you've seen this before. There's a, a link to look back API docs. This is more on the advanced side uh, because there's a whole new language for querying and stuff. Um, it's not hard, but let's just let's get the basics down behind us. Just know that there is an there is another API for getting for going in and fetching some really detailed stuff um, that'll make for some real powerful apps. Lastly, I want to remind you that using uh, that Stack Overflow is a great place to go if you have questions about uh, using Rally and the app uh, SDK on the API. Uh, I'm going to leave it at that. I hope this was helpful. Uh, Web Service API for the actual defining what the object models are and what data is, is really available. And then the SDK for all of the components uh, that we'll use to, to build the app. And, that, and the SDK is going to, as you'll see when we start fetching data, is going to be using the, um, the Web Service API to pull data. And you'll, so you'll have to know, what, uh, you'll have to know about the, the domain object models uh, when you're using the SDK. Now you have uh, references to those docs. Um, let's get coding on the next one. Bye.